وأشهد أن سيدنا محمد عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وحبيبه أدى الأمانة وبلغ الرسالة ونصح الأمة وكشف الله به الغمة وجاهد في الله حق جهاده حتى أتاه يقين فصلوات ربي وسلامه عليه وعلى كل من اهتدى بسنته إلى يوم الدين والعاقبة للمتقين اللهم جعلنا منهم يا رب العالمين آمين آمين ثم آمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون أما بعد فقال رسولنا الكريم صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم ذاك طعم الإيمان من رضي بالله ربا وبالإسلام دينا وبمحمد رسولا the beloved messenger وسلم, said he has tasted the delight of faith he has truly tasted faith and so do we not feel that yearning in our hearts for who he is about to describe the prophet وسلم, said he has tasted faith he has truly tasted faith and we will spend our lives trying to taste the delight of that faith if only for but a moment of our lives. But the Prophet ﷺ gave us the formula in this hadith. And if we want to have a fast, uh, the, the fast pass, if you will, I'm here in Northern California, right? The fast pass. If we want that shortcut for the delight of faith to be experienced in our hearts, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu gave us that shortcut. And it is through riba, it is through contentment. He said, the one who is content with Allah as his Lord, with Islam as his religion, and with Muhammad as his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The one who is content with Allah as his Lord, with Islam as his religion, and with Muhammad as his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And this is the first question, or the only question, that we will be asked in the grave once we hear the last traces of footsteps leaving the place where we will make our final abode in this creation, in this life. The angels will raise us up, each one of us, in our graves, and ask us about those three entities. Who is your Lord? What is your religion? And who was the Prophet sent to you? And those are not easy questions to answer. Those are not questions that we can memorize and pay lip service to. But those are questions that we will be able to answer with the confidence that is commensurate with our contentment with them in this life. That if we are content truly with Allah as our Lord, if we are truly content with Islam as our religion, and if we are truly content with Muhammad as our messenger, then the ease with which we will answer that question will be to our greatest benefit once we are posed with that question. And so he said, iman." He will taste the flavor of his faith. It was related that the Prophet ﷺ said to a group of the faithful, Who are you? Ma antum? Kalu nahnu al muminun. They said, We are the faithful. He asked his companions, who he is building, whom he is building from the ground up into men and women. And he asked them, Who are you? And they said, we are the faithful. We have iman, they said. فَقَالَ مَا عَلَمَتُ إِمَانِكُمْ And he said, what is the sign of your iman in that case? قَالُوا نَصْبِرُ عِنْدَ الْبَلَاءِ وَنَشْكُرُ عِنْدَ الرِّضَى وَنَرْضَى بِمَوَاقِعِ الْقَضَاءِ They said, we are patient with tribulation. We are grateful with our contentment and we are content wherever the 
decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala falls. فَقَالَ مُؤْمِنُونَ وَرَبِّ الْكَعْبَةِ He said, faithful, and I swear by the Lord of the Kaaba that you are so. And in another narration he said, قَالَ حُلَمَاءُ عُلَمَاءُ كَادُوا مِنْ فِقْهِهِمْ أَنْ يَكُونُوا أَنْبِيَاء He said, scholars, people who, have, of, who truly have understanding in their innermost core, and from that understanding they are virtually prophets. That is how he described his companions, that they were virtually prophets by what they described of their faith because they were, they were finally able to taste the delight of it in their hearts through the contentment that they had with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as their Lord. And so this word rida, this word rida, it comes from three letters, ra, da, and uh, uh, wow. Right? Ra, da, and wow, rida. And, or ra, da, and ya. And this word, ra, da, uh, ya, ha, means con to be content, to be pleased. But it's connected, if you switch the, the, the ordering of the letters, it's connected to ra, wow, da. Right? Ra, wow, da. Which is, which in its uh, plural is riyad, right? Rauda and Riyadh, which is a meadow in a garden. And so this word, if you switch the order of it, you have contentment, right? Contentment that, that, that allows the heart to be a meadow of paradise. It is contentment that allows the heart to experience paradise as though you were walking through its meadows. And this meaning was not lost on, Ibn, uh, on uh, Imam al-Razi who talks about al-ishtiqaq al-akbar when you get uh, the, this variation in switching the order of the letters. And he talks about this and he says that فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْعَبْدَ مَخْلُوقٌ مِّنْ جَسَدٍ وُرُوح He says that know that the servant is created from body and spirit. Body and spirit. They fuse together to make the human being. فَجَنَّةُ الْجَسَدِ هِيَ الْجَنَّةُ الْمَوْصُوفَةِ and so the heaven of the body is the heaven that is described by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala throughout the book. وَجَنَّةُ الرُّوحِ هِيَ الرِّضَ الرَّبِّ And the jannah of the soul, the jannah of the ruh, of the spirit, is the contentment with his Lord. Is contentment with it. So jannah is contentment with Allah. That you could already be in jannah if we have you and I, if we have this contentment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's as though we walk in Jannah before we even get there. This is the meaning. And this contentment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in terms of the, that's lexically what it means, but, uh, but in the sciences of, uh, on, on the tongues of the people of the heart, the doctors of the heart, they say that contentment is surur al-qalbi bimar al-qada'i وَقِيلَ اسْتِقْبَالُ الْأَحْكَامِ بِالْفَرَعِ They said that they, they gave different definitions. One is inward contentment of the heart. It is happiness, inward happiness of the heart with how the decree falls upon, upon a person. How the decree flows through a person. That Allah's decree flows through us like the blood through our veins. And if we find happiness in our heart with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then that is the station of contentment. They said that it's also istiqbal al-ahkami bil farah That when the decree of Allah comes, that we receive it with happiness. We receive whatever that decree is with utter happiness. And they said, وَقِيلَ السُّكُونُ الْقَلْبِ تَحْتَ مَجَارِي الْأَحْكَامِ And it is also the tranquility of the heart under the, the, the decree as it falls. وَقِيلَ النَّذَرُ الْقَلْبِ إِلَى قَدِيمِ اخْتِيَارِ اللَّهِ لِلْعَبْدِ فَإِنَّهُ اخْتَارَ لَهُ الْأَفْضَلِ and it was also said that it is how the heart perceives the pre-eternal choice of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the pre-eternal will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with respect to us in every one of our affairs. And so when, it, when, and so when uh, and, and knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has only willed that which is for our benefit and that which uh, it will, will ultimately be for our good. To have certainty in that, that Allah's choice for us is the best choice for us. 
Abu Abdullah al-Saji said that there are, there are people among the, 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 the creation of Allah that they have bashfulness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like the bashfulness of young children. That there are men, grown men, who have the same bashfulness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just like the bashfulness of young children. I met some of these men in Mauritania. You don't even see their, their, their face. They cover their faces. They cover their, their, their mouths. So that you don't even see. So that from, from, from sheer bashfulness, they'll cover their mouths in front of other men. And so you'll never see them eat. You'll never see them laugh. And you can only hear their voice from, from behind a veil. I've, I've met grown men like this. And they said that, they, that their bashfulness with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is such that they don't have any happiness. Like Sayyidina Umar ibn Abdul Aziz used to say in his daily dua, every time he would wake up, he said, he would say, Asbahtu wa mali sururun illa fi al qada." That I have entered a new morning and I have no happiness except, for, except in the places where the decree of, of my Lord falls. Wherever the decree of my Lord falls, that is where I have my happiness. That is where I'm most happy. And so this does not mean, and don't get it twisted, this does not mean that we don't resist injustice, for example. That we, don't see, that we see oppression and that we're pleased with that, that we're content with that. لِكُلِّ مَقَامِ الْمَقَامِ right? Every situation has a, an appropriate response. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with corruption. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with fusuq and asyan and, 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 and tama and all of these vices. Allah is not pleased. And He uses this word, Allah la yarda. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, la yarda. Wa la yarda li ibadihi al kufr. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not, is not pleased with kufr for his, for his servants. Although He wills it, but He is not pleased with it. And so we as bearing the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon us as well. There are moments where we are pleased with something and moments where we are displeased with a thing. Moments where we accept something with good contentment and good pleasure and moments where we resist. But ultimately, we are pleased and we have rida with the outcomes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees. Ultimately, we have rida with the outcomes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees because we know that the unseen is the context for everything that befalls us in the seen. The unseen is the context for everything that befalls us in the seen. Alamul ghaybi wa shahada. And it may be, and according to the Prophet ﷺ, that the man who is given the most in this world and had the most, the, the most luxurious life will be placed in, in, in Jahannam for an instant. And he will negate any blessing that he ever had. He will, he will not remember a single blessing that he enjoyed in this life. And the opposite is true. The one who suffered the most in this life will be put into Jannah for, a, for an instant. And he will negate all of the suffering that he ever had to endure in this life. That is the context for everything that we see. In that is the, in that is the, 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 the way that we can perceive and interpret good and evil in this world. That it's all from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But in the next life, if we have that view, in the next life, we, have, we know that everything is ordained and everything is decreed with a grand wisdom and purpose. And ultimately, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not unjust to any of His servants. مَنْ رَضِيَ بِاللَّهِ رَبَّنْ Whoever is pleased with his Lord, pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his Lord, Whoever is pleased with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as his Lord. Sufyan al Thawri once made this dua or asked Rabi al Adawiyah for, he asked her to pray for him. He asked her, Oh dear Rabi, ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be pleased with me. And she said, Allah tastahi min Allah. Sufyan al Thawri. Allah tastahi min Allah, she said, Don't you have bashfulness in front of Allah? You ask that Allah be pleased with you while you are not pleased with Him? How do you ask Allah that He be pleased with you while you go not pleased with Him? While every day you complain about... And he, she's not talking about Him directly, like criticizing Him, but reminding Him, waking Him up to the reality of the human condition. That we go day in, day out complaining 
about any number of things. And in every complaint is an expression of frustration with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then in the end of the day we say, Allahumma la'anna ridaka al Oh Allah, be pleased with us in, your, in, in, in the most exalted way. Be pleased with us in the most sublime way. Be pleased with us, Ya Allah. While we are not pleased with Allah, the mu'min does not complain. The mu'min does not complain. Why? Because the beloved is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is our Habib. Allah is our beloved. And if Allah is our beloved truly, then fi'lul mahbubi mahbub. Then everything the beloved does is beloved. If it's true love, if it's true love, whatever the beloved does is beloved to you because it's coming from the beloved. Whatever the beloved does is sweet to you because it's coming from the beloved. Whatever the beloved does is pleasurable for you because it's coming from the beloved. And it makes the beloved happy. This is how we treat our wives and our husbands. This is how we treat our children. That if they love a thing, that we would try to, to furnish it for them. Why? Because their, whatever makes them happy makes us happy. Whatever makes them pleased makes us pleased. So that which makes Allah pleased makes us pleased. That, that, that with which Allah is pleased makes us pleased as well. And so whatever Allah does is beloved to us. And what this requires is a reorientation. What it requires is a wake-up call. What it requires is for us to open our eyes to the reality of what is happening to us on a daily basis as a, as a community and as individuals. Imam Ali salam said, مَا رَأَيْتُ شَيْئًا قَطْ إِلَّا وَرَأَيْتُ اللَّهَ قَبْلَهُ وَبَعْدَهُ وَمَعَهُ that I have never seen a thing except that I see Allah before it, after it, and along with it. That nothing happens except that I see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the cause, at, at the cause, at the effect, and I see Allah in the moment. So ultimately there is no cause and effect. In our aqidah, there is no such thing as cause and effect. There is only the fi'l of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is only the action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when I take this match against this paper, that fire does not cause the paper to burn. In the example that our theologians give us, that paper does not cause that fire, that, that, that fire does not cause that paper to burn. But Allah causes that fire to ignite and Allah causes that paper to burn. So in that we, we, are, we witness two acts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the miracle is that we witness two acts. That we witness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in two acts as opposed to one. Because if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala willed, He could have that, that fire ignite and that paper not burn. And you and I would call that a miracle. And yes, it is a miracle because it, it, it contradicts what is conventional. Because it opposes what is conventional. But is not two acts of Allah that much more awesome than one act of Allah? Is not the ignition and the burning that, that much more miraculous than, than withholding the burning? And to see Allah in every moment, to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in every moment with the, with the eye of certainty, with the eye of certainty, this allows a believer to begin to reinterpret and to, and to interpret correctly all of the events that befall us in our day to day. All of the, if, if, if the men can come forward, please. All of the uh, events that happen to us on a, daily, on a daily basis. For if we truly see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then how will we respond to the test when it comes? How will we respond? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is behind every word, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is behind every act, how will we respond to that? The next, the next problem that faces us in our family, that we see the test of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that, and that He wants to bring us through that test closer to Him. In every step of the way, there is qabd and bust, there is constriction, there is expansion. And the constriction is there to test us. The expansion is there to test us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there Every, with, with every decree he is there 
with every decree. And so this pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what the, the believer seeks to seeks after. Ibn Anta'illah said, مَا تَرَكَ مِنَ الْجَهْلِ شَيْئًا مَنْ أَرَادَ أَنْ يُحْدِثَ فِي الْوَقْتِ غَيْرُ مَا أَذْهَرُهُ اللَّهُ فِي That the person who wants something other than what Allah has decreed, the person who wants something other than what Allah has decreed has not left one iota of ignorance. He has not left one iota of ignorance. Because everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decrees, He decrees with His wisdom. And if we were to, to, if we were to, to want something else other than that, after it happens, after it, yes, we resist oppression, we resist unjust injustice, but whenever the decree comes, it's irresistible. Sometimes, and it, and it comes sometimes against our own, against what we desire. And we have to have contentment. We have to have contentment. And learn from the lesson, and learn from every from from every uh, act of resistance. We have to learn. We have to get stronger. There were certain, there were certain battles that the Prophet ﷺ and the companions lost, and they had to learn through that. And there were certain battles that they won, and they had to learn from that. And in every in every battle was the wisdom of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Allah was teaching them through their defeats. And they said, the Arabs say, that mistakes are sometimes the very best of teachers. Maymun ibn Mihran, he said, that the person who is not content with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no medicine for his stupidity. And so the greatest Closing this part of the khutbah up, the greatest thing that you can possibly ask for, just imagine, the greatest, th the greatest blessing in Jannah, the greatest blessing in Jannah is to be able to see, to, to, to behold your Lord. That is the greatest blessing in Jannah, is to be able to behold Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To behold the countenance of your Lord. And as everyone is gathered in that in that reality, in that realm. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you and me among them. As everyone is gathered in that realm to experience that reality, just imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks you and He says, Saluni. He says, ask of me. And you are already there beholding your Lord, which is the yearning of our souls from the very moment we were created, to be in communion with Him. And he says, Saluni, ask of me. What could you possibly ask for? What could you possibly ask for in that moment? Abu Talib al Makki, in his book, Qut al Qulub, he says that when people, and, and he's, he's quoting, he says that all of those souls that have just been asked to ask of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that moment where they are beholding their Lord. They will say in unison, as they said before, Kalu Bala, they said, Yes, you are our Lord. In unison again, they will say, Ridaka, your contentment. Your contentment. Radiallahu anhum wa radu an, your contentment. Can you imagine asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for contentment after having that beatific vision? Could you imagine asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for anything else? But in unison, all of us will ask, inshallah, you and I will be there. All of us will ask, Ridaka, Ya Allah. Ridaka. We want your contentment, Ya Allah. We want, we seek your contentment, Ya Allah. And Abu Talib al Makki says that the reason for that is not because the contentment is greater than the beatific vision, but because through his contentment, the beatific vision will perpetuate. Through his contentment, the beatific vision will be repeated through that. So do you see the great status of riba 
it is the highest of the maqamat of the ruh. As we ascend from sabr to shukr, from patience to gratitude and from gratitude all the way, we go through all of the spiritual maqams inshaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring us and raise us up through all of those, those rungs on the ladder. Rida is the highest of those stations. Rida is the highest of those stations. Allahumma la tahrimna rida ya rabbal alameen. Warda anna rida ka larfa. Allahumma ameen, ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa sallam muslimin fa astaghfiru inna huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa salatu wa salamu ala ashraf al-Nur. الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد سيد الأولين والآخرين وعلى صحابته ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين من رضي بالإسلام دينا and the one who is content with Islam as his religion as a community we have departed from the prophetic definition of Islam we have turned it into an identity and as such have ascribed ourselves to an entity what Sheikh Hamza coined Bani Islam. We have taken a word whose first connotation described a relationship between creator and creature and turned it into an ID card. The Shahada, which is a spiritual perceptiveness in witnessing, is plastered onto the flags of political nation states and picket signs. It is appropriated as a symbol of national identity and thereby politicized into the consciousness of the citizens of the state. From time to time it assumes political sovereignty and unleashes untold havoc. In the words of Shaykh Abdul Hakim Winter, there is no Islam but Islam, and Muhammad is the messenger of Islam. If we are truly pleased with Islam as our religion, we have to know what is this word? What is this, the nature of Islam? What is the reality of this word? Because we, read it, we wear it like an ID badge sometimes. So when Islam is a noun, it's a person, place, or a thing. It's an organization. It's a convention. It's a book. It's a body of scholars. It's a mosque. It's a movement. It's a university degree. It's a legal code. It's a box you check on an application. Or it's a way of life. And when Islam is an adjective, it describes a noun. It's Islamic. It's cultural. It's an affiliation. It's the desire to Islamicize something. It's sectarian, it's an accessory, it's posturing, it's an ideal, it's an ideology, it's an, en it's an identity. However, Islam being a verbal noun, a mustaf, it is a gerund or an infinitive. It is submitting, it is an intention, it's a process, it's practice, it's tribulation, it's success and failure, it's discovery. It's endeavoring, it's serving, it's living. He is the one who named you Muslims, Ibrahim alayhi salam. So that, that is our faith. That is our religion. It's endeavoring and it's struggling. And if we're pleased with Islam as our religion, then we have no, no we, we bring to it no filters. We come as we are to Islam as it is, to aspire to be the best version that we can be of ourselves. And it is a process, it is an, an approach to our Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a baggage, of, with, with, with luggage of isms that weigh you down, then how will your spirits ever soar? And every ism is a prism of a mind in prison. Every ism is a prism of a mind yet in prison. So we don't bring our prisons to the to atabat al-iman, to the threshold of faith. We don't we leave our prison, we leave our, our isms at the door when we enter into to receive the generous hospitality of our noble Lord and sit at the at the banquet of his blessings. We leave our prison my, our isms behind. And that is submission. Enter into submission entirely. Enter into peace entirely. Enter into this tranquility entirely with your mind, body and soul. This is Islam. And if you are pleased with that, then, then, leave, then, then burn away the isms. Burn away all those identity markers. 
that are barriers inevitably between you and your, your Lord and come to Him seeking His good pleasure with you. Not worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ala harf, on an edge. So if it conforms with what I believe, then it's good and it's wholesome. And if not, then there's something wrong in it. Or there's something that has to be reinterpreted in order for it to, to fly. And you will not fly, you will sink. وَمَنْ رَضِيَ بِمُحَمَّدٍ رَسُولًا And the one who is pleased with Muhammad as his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. Are we truly pleased with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as the messenger? Are we truly pleased with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam as the messenger? النَّبِيُّ أَوْلَى بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. Allah says this. This is not some hadith where you can look into the sun of the chain of transmission and say, well, what, what is really going on here? Because it really seems that, uh, that people have sort of gone overboard in their love for the Prophet ﷺ such that they made him more entitled to us than we are to ourselves. النَّبِيُّ أَوْلَى بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ مِنْ أَنفُسِهِمْ The Prophet is more entitled to the faithful than they are to their very own soul. That's a verse out of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is not some hadith. That is a verse out of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, And your Lord will give you to the point that you are well pleased, that you have contentment. And his contentment is connected to you and me. His contentment is never personal. His contentment is never for himself. His contentment is never to recompense himself or to compensate himself for all that he has suffered and lost and all that he has sacrificed for the sake of this ummah. His, his contentment is just for you and me. And that's why on the Day of Judgment he will say, Naam, ana laha, ana laha. When all of the other prophets will forsake their people, he will say, I am for this. I am for that. I am for this intercession. And all of his intercession will be for you and me. And he is now in his grave interceding for us. You don't believe me? He says, he said, hayati khayrun lakum wa mamati khayrun lakum. In a hadith related by Sahih Muslim, so don't talk to me about the chain of transmission. That my life is better for you and my death is better for you. As for my life, we share space and time. You, could, you can't talk to me, I talk to you. I talk right back to you. You're here, we, we share these days and nights. And as for my death, amalukum, he said, that your actions will be presented before me. Either individually or as an ummah. There's a difference among the scholars about that. Either individually that our deeds will be presented before the beloved وسلم, in his grave, or as an ummah. So he is not aloof of what his ummah is, what his ummah finds. And he said that if I see good, I will pray for you. And if I see I, 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 if I see good. I will praise my Lord. And if I see otherwise, I will seek forgiveness for you. And this is happening now. This is happening now in his grave. In his grave, this is happening. Are you not pleased with that? Are you not pleased with him? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Does he not have jurisdiction over your life? Does he not have rights over you and me? Does he not have the right to command you? Does he not have the right to forbid you? Does he, does he not have that right? Bala, ya Allah. Bala, he has that right. Nabi awla bil min The Prophet is more entitled to the faithful than they are to their very own self. So are you not pleased with Muhammad as your messenger? And if we are truly pleased with the Prophet as our messenger, if we are truly ushaq Rasulillah, if we are truly the ashikhun of Rasulullah, then our deeds must be such that bring upon us his ishq. Our deeds must be such that they must be worthy of his ishq for us. If you are truly ushaq of the Messenger وسلم, truly yearners, lovers of the Prophet وسلم, then your deeds must be in conformity with what he brought with the sharia that he brought, with the guidance that he brought, with his command and with his prohibition. 
Because He loves you more than you even love yourself. He loves us more than we love ourselves. And that was the realization of Sayyidina Umar ta'ala anhu. When he said, I love you more than anything. More than my wealth, more than my family, more than anything. More than everything I own. Except this nest that is between these two sides. And the Prophet addressed everyone through Umar. He addressed you and me through Umar. He addressed you and me through Umar. And he said that none of you, none of you will have his faith perfected until I become more beloved to him than all of his property, all of his wealth, all of his family, everything he loves, even his own nafs between his two sides. And Sayyidina Umar radhi anhu had a moment of utter transformation. In that there was a veil that was lifted off of his eyes in that moment. And he said, Ya Rasulullah, I swear that you are more beloved to me than this nafs. You are more beloved to me. And he remembered that this was the same nafs that was on its way one day to, on a suicide mission to killing the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he would have surely died that day. The companions would not have allowed that. Believe what you will about Sayyidina Umar on the battlefield. There is no way that the companions would have allowed him to touch the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. No way. And he was, he was willing to die that day. And he said, this was the same nafs that led me to kill this man who was, who was sent to this nafs to clutch it from, my, for, for, from me, to, to wrest it out of, my, out of my, my, my clutches. So how could I not, how could I not give my heart to this man? How could I not give my mind over to this man? How could I not give my being over to this man? How can I not bask in the light of his countenance? How can I not allow the, all of what he has to give to be received? How can I prevent that by my own love of this nafs? You take this nafs, Ya Rasulullah, you do with it what you please. It is yours. You are more entitled to it than I am. My Lord told me that you are more entitled to this nafs than I am to it. And he said, Al-Ana Ya Umar, now O Umar, now O Umar, now, now it's real, now it's pure, now it's perfect, now you can taste its sweetness. اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الأولين وصلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الآخرين وصلي وسلم على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا اللهم اغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر عنا سيئاتنا وتوفنا مع الأبرار وجعلنا من المحسنين يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم لا تحلنا معية رسولك صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم في السكنات وفي الحركات وفي الأقوال وفي الأفعال وفي الأحوال يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم ادعنا رضاك نرفع اللهم ادعنا رضاك نرفع اللهم اجعلنا راضين مرضيين يا رب العالمين وصلي وسلم مبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وأقم الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله هيا للصلاح هيا للصلاح هيا للفلاح هيا للفلاح قد قام أصلا قد قام أصلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين 